What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back for another episode of Poker Hands. And today we're going to be taking a look at another ham from the Super High Roller Cash game from Triton Poker. Now I know we like to have a lot of big bluffs and full houses and all of that type of wonderful stuff, but today we're actually going to be looking at a hero call that may or may not be the correct move. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. Robo gonna start off the action of Jack Knight suited. Gets two calls. One more card from Lang Yu. Pocket Queens for Romaine in the big blind. He is gonna squeeze it up. You're the, you're the craziest Frenchman I've ever played. I don't know what you're doing. Have you not met Rico? He's been taking lessons. Oh. 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 <clears throat> oh. Nice so, six diamonds, yeah? Duan. And Rob Young. Now, if you've seen many of these episodes, you'll know that our blinds are 1 million, 2 million Korean won with a 2 million Korean won big blind ante. So this is an ante game and the ranges will then be a little bit looser. Our hand begins with Andrew Robo opening up Jack-9 suited. Uh, when you're playing at a non-full table and with an ante, this is definitely a move you want to make. But if you were under the gun at, let's say, a 9-handed non-ante table, you could look to just let this one go, maybe raise every now and then. Now, maybe in some lineups in early position 3x rays, we get a little respect. But this isn't one of them. The action folds to Tom Dwan and looks down at Ace-5 suited. And you definitely want to play Ace-5 suited when you're facing raises. It's a very nice hand to work in as a bluff in some situations. We've talked about this on the channel before. Now, when you're in this spot, you probably mainly want to re-raise. This is not a hand that's going to be um, a, a very profitable call. You have good removal and equity against a continue range. So you mainly want to look to 3-bet when you do decide to play this hand. Anyway, Duan does make the call, and now Yong looks down at the cutoff at 9 6 suited and obviously folds. With Yong out of the way, the button folds as well, and now the small blind looks down at 7 6 suited. And when you have 7 6 suited in the small blind, it's a little bit of an interesting situation. When you have a lot of players in there, you might be inclined to call, but these weaker suited connectors are a lot worse than the higher ones. I know you might think no shit, but it still should be pointed out. As these hands get lower and lower, their flush value decreases as well as their pair value, and they also make the lower ends of straights, culminating in the lowest suited connectors making very few straights at all. Because of this, I still think that Yu Liang should probably fold here in the small blind. Now, I don't mind maybe once in a blue moon coming in for a squeeze, or maybe once in a blue moon coming in for a call as well, but I'm seeing this mistake constantly when we look at these hands. We see hands that should be low frequency or no frequency ending up being played a lot, and I don't think you're going to end up making very much money. Anyway, Liang does decide to call, and now the action's on Romain in the big blind with pocket queens. With pocket queens, you have no choice but to bump this up. We got way too many people in here. They probably got all kinds of nonsense. It's time to make this very expensive, which he does, making it 36 million to go. This raises a 6x the open, uh, but we do have four players. Frankly, in this game, I would not even mind seeing this be like 40 or 45 million, given how it's been playing. But again, in a normal game, this would definitely be a reasonable size. Robo gets out of the way, and now Tom Dwan has to make a decision with Ace 5 suited. Uh, I think that I would probably lean towards a fold here. I don't hate the idea of a call. Again, your equity against strong ranges will be much better with Ace-5 ace suited than some of the other holdings, but I still don't know if you're going to be getting the odds. They are pretty deep, although Yong is much deeper and Liang is much deeper than, than uh, Duan is here, but at the same time, I think folding would be the prudent move. Anyway, so Tom Duan makes the call, and now over to Yong, who somehow still has cards. They must have they must have missed his fold the first time around. This must be like a graphical error, but I'm sure at this point he folds now. You have 9-6 suited facing a massive 3-bet. Really nothing to talk about. Over to Liang in the small blind now with 7-6 suited. Definitely can't call this out of position. It's just not going to make you money. He does make the fold, and let's take a flop. Aaron, remind me. Tight is right. Tight is right. Tight is right. Tight is right. Remain going to check here. It's very deep stacked poker. <laughs> I need to try to balance it. <laughs> right? Cheers, cheers. Cheers. Rob, you're only trying to decide if you should take a stab at this pot. Over 100k in the middle. Checks around. 
The flop comes 10-9-3 with three hearts. Uh, Romain flops an over pair as well as the third nut flush draw. And Tom Dwan flops totally nothing. So you would expect this to go bet fold or something of that nature. Anyway, Romain does decide to slow it down for a check, and I don't actually mind that decision. Especially when you're playing deep stack poker, you're going to want to mix in some strong hands in your check range. And if you do bet and get raised, this is not a hand you're going to be looking to pile all the chips in. You can certainly have flushes here. Your opponent could have sets. They could have a lot of hands that beat you. But by pot controlling, you definitely allow yourself an opportunity to realize your equity. I wouldn't really mind seeing a mix of both plays here on the flop. Now over to Tom Duan with ace-5 here, uh, I would just go ahead and, and check this back and look to let it go. And I like bluffing as much as the next guy, but having the ace of diamonds here is a very bad card. That's a card you'd want Romain to have, ace-king of diamonds, ace-king with the ace of diamonds. These are hands that would certainly look to check fold, unless of course he had like the king of hearts or something like that. So basically having the ace of diamonds is a very bad card here, so Tom Duan does decide to check it back and let's take a heads up turn. Wait, hold on, Yong, Yong's... Yong has, I, okay, I guess, I guess Yong somehow must, they must have, there must have been some kind of a graphical error here on the flop because Yong did in fact call 36 million with 96 suited uh, and has flopped middle pairs. So uh, I guess he's still in the hand. We'll, I'll, I'll make sure that this is correct. Let's go ahead and take a turn. Romain's now got a queen high flush. Only worried about the king of hearts. He's going to keep checking, thinks there's more value in getting his opponents to stab at it. The turn comes the Ace of Hearts, a very interesting card. Uh, now, Romain has the second nuts here with his Queen of Hearts. Tom Duan has moved into the lead with top pair. And Yong now, his, his second pair has become third pair and a substantially weaker hand. I think in this spot, the most prudent move for Romain is to go for a check, although I don't mind working in a bet every now and then. Your hand is very likely good. I don't think the King of Hearts is a very likely card for either player, so I wouldn't mind him seeing betting the turn and look to mainly bet the river and get some value. On the same page, when you are deep and you do you are out of position against two players in very static spots, I never mind slowing it down and seeing what happens and giving yourself some really solid hands to be able to check and call bets. Romain does decide to go for the check here on the flop. Now the action's over to Tom Dwan. This is a crystal clear check. You have potential showdown value here with your top pair. Obviously, if someone has a heart or a better ace, you're beat. So you're not very likely to win. But you could definitely have other weaker hands you might want to bluff with. So it wouldn't make sense to bet for value. Wouldn't make sense to bet as a bluff. In those spots, you mainly just want to check. Now over to Rob Young when he looks down and sees his second pair has become third pair. Uh, I still think this is a spot he should be checking. It's a little more reasonable for Young to maybe want to bluff in this situation. But again, he could find some weaker hands. Maybe some hands like uh, Jack Deuce suited that could be in here. Or maybe like a nice um, King 7 offsuit with no heart. These are the kinds of hands that when you flat this big of a 3-bet, you might want to work into your bluff range. Anyway, Young does decide to check back the turn. So we still have all three players and let's take a river. So He's checks a, around. An ambassador. U.S. ambassador. Uh, tried to sponsor him. Because oh, yeah. they know he's number one. So they, oh, they scout sorry. everyone. Yeah. Romaine trying to decide, is it better to go for some value against like a jack of hearts, eight of hearts, or check and induce a bet? Seems like he wants to bet. Tom used to be number one seven years ago. I was number 20 five years ago. Yeah, now I, was, I was a long back, long back <laughs> ten years ago. You were, you were number one in China ten years ago. <laughs> now we have to play. It's an over bet. <laughs> trying to make it look like he's got a bluff. Without <laughs> 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 Duan on a decision. He still has one player to act behind him. He's going to lay down the aces. Rob Yong makes trip nines. There is four hearts out there, so it's pretty scary. 
The river comes another nine. Yon has actually improved to three of a kind, and Duan is now in last place with this top pair. At this point, if I'm Romain, you have to bet and get some value. I think a check raise is a little bit too strong, although it's also kind of reasonable as well because it's very unlikely either opponent has a full house. If either one of them had um, two pair or set in the flop, they'd be betting. So really the only full house that I think is somewhat likely is a hand like ace nine suited, uh, which again, not very likely compared to all the other hands. There is some chance Tom Dwan trapped the turn to try and get Yang to bet. So there are a few ways you can lose here with the queen of hearts, uh, but it is definitely strong enough for a bet and could even be considered to be a check raise. Anyway, Romain does decide to go ahead and bet on the river, and now the action's over to Tom Dwan. With top pair here, if it was just a heads-up pot, maybe you could consider a call. But there's another guy behind, and if he has a heart, he might be able to overcall and win both your money. So you can see that the relative position on the river here really hurts Tom Dwan. Last to act, maybe you could pick off a potential bluff. Now, in this spot, it's actually going to save him because his opponent is value betting. But again, you can see that when you're sandwiched between multiple players, it doesn't give you as much playability. Now to Rob Yong with his three of a kind. It's a situation that you're not thrilled about. If, if they have even a single heart, then you're beat. But your opponent's actually representing a fairly polarized range. He's saying, I've got, a, re realistically, the king of hearts, the queen of hearts, maybe the jack of hearts. But even then, that's not too likely. It's a situation where when it's three-way, you have to be very careful with what you're willing to value bet. And because of that, his range is so particular. Does he have the high heart that he's saying? Or is he maybe turning a hand into a bluff that didn't want to bluff on an earlier street? Maybe a hand like King, Queen of Spades. Maybe a hand like Queen, Jack of Spades. Something like that that he didn't want to bluff earlier that maybe want, might want to bet here on the river. It's not the most likely, but it's definitely possible. And that's the thing. When you're in a river situation, you're facing a bet. When you have a hand like three of a kind on a four flush board, you don't have to be worried about better three of a kind or low flushes. Your opponent is saying they have a high heart or nothing. And in those spots, sometimes you got to dig deep and make the hero call. He is going to lay it down. I know you guys thought because the title was called that he was going to call. I know I'm keeping you honest. I know you guys don't like those spoilers. Now in the future, if you see a spoiler at the end, if it was a spoiler, you can say, well, at least he's balancing. So videos are happening, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at 11.